you're right there. Mark here from Six Plus Save, going over another episode, episode seven of the Fire Slayer series. We're going to be going over the grand strategies from the third edition book. Um, grand strategies, all the path of Grimnir. If you did want to follow along, it is on page seventy-four in your battle tone. So let's crack on. You got four of them. You got guarded lineage, defend the lodge. Oath Takers and Skull Breakers and Masters of the Forge. I love the names. I genuinely love the name. So let's crack on. So you've got Guarded Lineage. When the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if there is one friendly rune father and one or more friendly rune sons on the battlefield. I really like this one. You can make your rune father and your rune sons very, very durable. Um, because you can put them on magma drops, you can put them on foot with a retinue. There's multiple different ways you can do it. Now, there is one thing you need to talk to your opponent before you start the game, just in case you are running two rune, uh, rune fibers, one mounted and one not, let's say. Because the way this is worded, if both rune fibers survive, you technically don't get it. Is rules as written and rules as intended until GW come out and you know uh, errata it or anything like that. Technically, if you did go to a tournament and you go against one of those people that goes rules as written, blah blah blah, you would fail it. Okay, but as noted, I don't think you're gonna be running more than one room father at a time, but. You never know. That's just one thing. Just have a word with your friend or your opponent if you are running two room fathers. Okay. But let's crack on. I do like it anyway. It's really thematic. You're trying to guard your lineage. Obviously, as they titled it. Defend the Lodge. When the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if there are no enemy units wholly within your territory. Don't think you're really going to take this one. Um, I like the whole idea that you're defending your lodge, you know, you're, you're stopping orcs and ogres and undead and, you know, chaos invading your lands. I love it. It's very thematic. Okay. Problem is you're an army that wants to get up into the opponent's face. You are not defensive. You can be, but you're not. Your main weight is from you being offensive. The vast majority of your army, bar three units, have a five inch move. The Magma Dross have a 12 inch move at full health. You're not going to be screening out your backfield. If your opponent has some form of teleporting or some form of flying, or some form of movement, you're never going to defend your backfield. You're never going to screen it enough and win the game. So, regrettably, this one is a no-go. You, you can give it a go. You know, if you think you can screen out and you've got umpteen Volkite Berserkers and so on and so forth, give it a go. But a lot of the time, I think it's going to limit how you want to play your Fire Slayers very much up in your opponent's face. Let's crack on. Oath Takers and Skull Breakers. Do like this one. Um, when the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if you've completed at least four battle tactics. And every battle tactic you completed this battle was from the Oaths of Battle list on page 75. So. So you need to complete four battle tactics to get this. Fine. Um, on 75, I'll be doing it in a future video, you've got Oaths of Battle, the Fire Slayers one. There's six of them, okay? Five and six. They are very nice. They're decent. They're very, very nice. The problem is, okay, the core ones are very good and they give you benefit. A lot of them give you bonuses for using monsters. The Fire Slayer ones don't. So that's negative. The second one, unless I'm reading this wrong, it says every battle tactic you complete this battle must be from the Oaths of Battle. 
So as soon as you take the Oath Taker's grand strategy, you cannot touch the core ones. Okay? So you are stuck with these ones. I wish that wasn't the case. But unless I'm mistaken, you cannot do that. Okay? And some of the core ones can be easier. Some of them are advanced with three units. Done. But I do love the thematic and I do love how it's rewarding you for playing the battle tactics. Okay? You can have some great fun with them. Uh, and last, we got Masters of the Forge. Oh, apologies. When the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if there are any invocations under your command on the battlefield. This could be a secret really good one to go for because they unless you roll really bad an invocation doesn't just go poof um they're just really really good and as i've written down there there is a priest trait that if the priest dies you just summon a molten inferno inferno off for free and you don't need to cast so you just keep like an invocation in your back pocket and maybe that trait and just keep that priest, you know, in your backfield out the way, you know, supporting from afar. That's quite a solid one to go for. I really do like it. Um, Because you're not worrying too much. You just need to get one invocation off. It's not multiple. It's not one per turn or anything like that. It's just one for the end of the battle. I really do like that one. Really do. But that's it. Um, bit of a slightly off video. I know it's four grand strategies. But I do like them all. I genuinely do like them all. As I said, the first one, Guarded Lineage. Just double check if you do have two room fathers in your list. Double check your opponent. Defend the Lodge, I love it. It's very thematic, but I think you are going to struggle to keep your opponents out of your deployment. Oath Takers is great because the Oaths of Battle are really, really good. But the core ones are better in a lot of circumstances. So you got to weigh the pros and cons of that. And Masters of Forge, I think it could be hilarious that you go, your priest is now going to go when he dies, he just brings up an invocation. You win your grand strategy from him sacrificing himself. Could be quite fun. But anyway, if you've enjoyed the video and you've enjoyed me rambling along, please give it a like. Comment down below with what you know what joy you've had with the grand strategies. Um, affiliate links and help to the social medias are down below. Please give them a gander. Very much appreciated. And you haven't, if you haven't already subscribed, please do more the merrier and as always thank you so very very much for watching through to the end is very much appreciated but i hope to see you all next time you all take care